the Buster Rhymes. Hold on. Nigga. <laughs> 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, Bus. You coming? You coming at five? I'm trying to make it happen, King. I'm over here dealing with a little bit of prepping, getting nails done and shit for my night tonight. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm yo. Get my, I'm getting my motherfucking sexy shit together, Playboy. All right, yeah. So just a summary of what, what's happening here. So you have this, you have all these signals coming from any car, but in this case, an electric car. And uh, you have the steering wheel, you have your brake, which is responsible for the recuperation, how the battery recharges. You have your accelerator, um, which is the go pedal. Yeah. You have your accelerometer and your gyros which is like the position of the car and the balancing of the car you have your suspensions you have gps you have your radar your sonar okay. um, so your radar your radar and all these sensors and so in this case we took these sensors and we aimed them at our sound generation engine that we created called sound driver and what happens with that combination is every commute rearrange, uh, compose a drive. So instead of having text to music with AI, it's sensor to music that is helping shuffle um, and responsible for how the song unfolds. So this is idle. Uh, so if this is a, you know, a V8 or a combustible engine, you hit the gas, it's But because this is an electric and sound drive is the way to express the drive, our rev is. And that's happening just from the push of the pedal. Yeah. Wow. So you really get to hear what your drive is like. And each drive being unique, it composes its own song. Yeah. Wow. So put it in reverse. with the idea in uh, April 2022 um, I sit in a lot of I've sat in a lot of companies future future departments so I worked at Intel in the past sat in their futurist department and in this case I went from being an ambassador at Mercedes to being in their work sessions their think tank brainstorm sessions and so they showed me um, um, their their electric vehicle that had a V8 simulator. Yeah. Like, woo, woo, woo. I'm like, yo, that sounds pretty real. It's just coming out of speakers. He's like, what do you mean? Is that a problem? I was like, yeah, well, the engine is coming from the front of the car. Now I got engine sounds coming out of where my music's playing. Is that really the ideal yeah. experience? And so he takes off, woo, and we turn a corner. I'm like, now that sounds fake. He was like, what do you mean? I was like, well, how do you simulate gravity pushing down on gears if this was a V8? If I'm going 30 miles around yeah. the corner, uh, gravity is taking them gears and going, and you hear, whether you pay attention to it or not, you you know gravity is at work. Yeah. How do I do that in a simulation? If I'm going through a tunnel, if I roll down the windows and I rev the freaking like, vroom, vroom, yeah. in a tunnel, everybody does that if they have a freaking like V8. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I do reverberation in an electric vehicle in a tunnel? That's why I need your Jeep, and that's when the light wow. will hit. It's like, if you give me your GPS, and I go through a tunnel, I can open a reverb channel. And then that's when I started thinking like, oh wow, who do I know that created a DAW, a, a, a workstation? Yeah. Who do I know that built a sound generation engine? I was like, well, let me call my homies, because every time I meet somebody, I put them on my phone on what they do. Hey, what's your name? Oh, my name is Michael. What do you do? Oh, I program. Program what? I program code. In what language? Python. Oh, shit. What kind of... You make apps? Yeah, fuck with apps. What you go to school? I want to fuck at MIT. Oh, shit. I don't really meet that many black people at MIT. 
yeah, nigga, like, I've been doing this shit for a minute, though. Like, oh, shit, all right, well, let me get your phone number. So you search apps on your phone, you know you have five people who create apps because of the contact the way it saves. Yeah. So now my Rolodex is like what people do. Wow. So if I'm ever in a meeting, I know who to call to materialize an idea. Wow. So in this case, I'm like, yo, I think I know how to build this. And so the Mercedes is like, what do you mean build it? I'm like, yeah, well, we just had a brainstorming situation. What are we going to do about it? Or we, do we want to materialize Let's it? Let's execute. So they're like, oh, wow. I was like, what do you need? I'm like, well, send me a car, bro. If you send me a car, I could put a team together and I can make this, I could, uh, you know, materialize this, this concept. So they sent me a car two months later. So then I'm like, then I have to tell my, my team, like, yo, look. I got to deliver this by December the 7th. Yeah. We got a couple of months to make this real. So, we put this huge computer in the trunk of the car. And the computer was doing all this processing of taking the sensors to be able to do all this like... You're, we're in the song right now. We're driving in the song. So it's it's wavelength is kind of calculated to how you're driving. It changes this song as it goes. Yeah. Wow. No, in, th in this case, it's rearranging, reconducting the song. Wow. I think what you said, too, is so interesting about how you had an idea and you made it happen and showed them the proof of concept. For you, has that been a lot of your biggest wins and successes is having the idea and finding a way to execute it and showing it, proving to people? Yeah, that's what it's all about. But then the worst case scenario is that they're gonna say is, yeah, our customers won't want this. But I would have left the meeting like, yo, I just showed this idea to the CEO of Daimler, you know, the, the dude at freaking Mercedes. I still would have felt like, yo, I did something. How many people yeah. come from the projects, create a system, and go to Mercedes City and Stuttgart? Like, they got a whole city where they, all they do is make Mercedes vehicles, trucks. Imagine the size of Hollywood from Vine all the way to La Cienega, from Sunset all the way to Melrose, and all it is is Mercedes. <laughs> Factories wow. and offices. That's Mercedes City. That's not what it's called, but yeah. that's what I call it. Yeah. I would have thought I accomplished an ultimate because I had an idea and was able to bring it to the CEO and he drive it. So if I, if he would have said, "Oh, this is great, but you know, it's not ready for," yeah, it's not our brand. I still would have been like, yo. The accomplishment is in doing it, not the result from, that comes from it. So in this case, I showed it to Mercedes, and he's like, how fast can you get this in our car? <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. You got what you wished for, and now I got to do it. <laughs> now I got to take this big-ass computer and miniaturize it and productize it. And it has to behave the same way that big computer did. That means the latency... <laughs> has to be instant yeah that means a file has to go from like a huge like gigs to megabytes it has to be mp3 size it has to be multi uh, two channel to multi-channel all interactive and what oh gosh i gotta go from demo team to product team so then i have to go through my rolodex like oh shit who do i know and then network cross network with people that are available to make this real and how, how long was the process from them saying all right how fast can you get it done to it being done enough to show them the next time i'll show you the text bro the text that i sent yeah to make this the cto who he's here his name is johan he's here right now so if i go to johan on fyi first so fyi is a company i started that means i had a kit executives at Mercedes to communicate on my yeah. messenger. So you gotta you gotta <laughs> first pitch them on your other company to get this idea right? going. So then but they invested in FYI. So we had our meeting like in like April. Yeah. And then I we had a follow up in May and so I texted him. 
before you got into a car and drove from point A to point B. And this journey, you listened to music. And life was great. Now, with this new system, you get in your car from point A to point B, and your car is now an AI composition system. Every driver will compose a ride from point A to point B. The car is an ecosystem for new creative experiences. This will open doors for creative community to create soundscapes for drives and add new color compositions to the world of music and audio, audio journeys. And FYI will be the marketplace for this. FYI and making projects is the iTunes Apple Music for this experience. Every musician will want to create soundscapes and every driver will want to publish their journey. TikTok made millions of people feel like they are creative. Instagram made millions of people realize they're photographers and creative influencers. We will make every driver a composer by simply driving. Because the future of, of cars don't make sounds that go vroom vroom. They sound like orchestras. That was my text. That is a pitch. That is an incredible yeah. pitch. And he's like, oh wow, how can we do this? I'm like, send me a car and I'll put a team together. And a lot of folks are thinking like, Oh wow, Mercedes did some some research and they picked Will to be the face. And they paid him some money. Yeah. In this case, like, no, no, no. I invested alongside Mercedes to materialize it on a concept I pitched them and assembled a team that they vetted to verify my engineers. How did you learn all of this stuff? How did you learn that this is what you had to do? Like, when, when was the first introduction to this new business investment pitching idea in the world? Black Eyed Peas. Because Black Eyed Peas, we got signed in 1997 when gangster rap was the only thing on the radio. And we're from the West Coast. I'm from the projects. I'm like a black weirdo. Meaning, I, ain't, I don't thug. And if you're not thugging in the projects, you weird, nigga. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I had to take, like, yo, Tripod Quest, that's my favorite group. J La Soul, that's my stuff. Yeah, I'm from the West Coast, those are East Coast groups. I produce my own music, I write my own songs, I co manage the group. If I could get Black Eyed Peas, first they only played us like on um, 92.3 The Beat. After the traffic jam, yeah. like how come we can't be played everywhere though? And then I heard "Sorry, Miss Jackson." I'm like, "Oh, cast, those are some black weirdos too." They got their song all over the radio, radio, not just at some time on the radio. They yeah. play that everywhere. Like, yo, how do I do that? How do I have my "Sorry, Miss Jackson"? Common had his like, "There is a light that shines." I'm like, yo. Common, that's a black weirdo from Chicago. He ain't thugging gangbanging. Like, I need to do my version of that. You have to be a complete thought type of person. Where are they going to play our music? Mm. If America is, is fixated on folks from the projects have to be one way and one way only, and that's the only way to enter the realm, then I need to figure out other realms. They playing us in Mexico. They're going to play us in Brazil. I need to be played in Indonesia, Cambodia. I need to be played in India. I need to be played in Kazakhstan. I need to be played in freaking Lithuania, you were thinking Slovakia, global. Czech Republic. I need to be played in not just London in the UK. I need to be played in Kent, in in freaking Birmingham, in Glasgow. I need to be played in Ireland, both Irelands. <laughs> I need to. I want. I want to be everywhere. everywhere yeah. And so to do that, you gotta think in an everywhere mentality. You gotta have different type of partners. What do you do? Are oh, you a promoter? What type of promoters? Oh, you do freaking rock concerts? Well, shit, let us, let us do some opening shit on the Warp Tour. So that type of mentality, <clears throat> just go get it. You know, you take two knives, they're not magnetized, but yeah. if you rub them, zzz, 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 then the motherfuckers become magnetized. How do I magnetize myself? How do I attract the things that I'm thinking about? How do I become plausible, not just ideas for ideas sake, but ideas that can materialize? What type of systematic and strategic thinking that I need to do to take this idea for it to have momentum to become an economy or business? Who do I need in my realm? Who am I missing? There's somebody missing in my freaking organization, right? So that, who do I delegate to? Who do I pass the baton to that's gonna love it as much as me? Mm. How do I inspire them to love it as much as me? How do I give them incentives to love it as much as I do? Yeah. 
And so that type of thinking <clears throat> started with Black Abyss. And and when did it become okay? Everything you just said, you th those thought processes, realizing how, how to attract things. When did you start to be like, oh, we're we're here. Everything I just figured out is now in the world. It's it's here. Oh, first you have to do that for other people. To expect that you do it for yourself and you materialize yourself, it don't work that way. Not even a tree. A seed came from a fruit. Mm. And then that seed, out of luck or strategy, is becomes a tree on its own. <clears throat> so in this case, I would do that for other companies. So... In 2004, Black Eyed Peas had success with Where's Love, but I moved my mom up the projects when we did the Dr. Pepper commercial in 2001, and then I met like ad agencies like Shia Day and Young and Rubicon. I'm like, yo, what it? Ad agency? What the hell is an ad agency? What do you guys do? And managers would never connect the artists with directly with the ad agency. I'll handle that. Right. Yeah. And so when I started meeting the ad agency, like, what do you do? Oh, man, I, I lead for uh, um, Foot Coleman Building. Foot Coleman Building, what is that? Oh, yeah, we do brands like da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Like, what the fuck? We're only worth a billion dollars. It's fine. Yeah, so I started hanging out with those cats. And so that's how I paid my mom's mortgage, was sitting at think tanks at agencies. So I bought my mom a house with the Dr. Pepper money. And then I would go to these think tanks every last Thursday of the month to help them brainstorm on their brand Bible or their go-to-market. And then I applied that knowledge to Black Eyed Peas for us to be a brand. Like, hey, what's our color palette? What's our logo? How does our logo shape and shift but still keep the same shape? Like, what's the color palette for this album? I started thinking like a brand. And then brands started working with us even more. And so I come home from tour one day and I'm like, yo, Jimmy, bro, these brands are pimping us using our reach to sell their product. We need to make our own product. We need to make our own hardware. So Jimmy classically says, you know why they call it hardware? Well, cause it's hard. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Jimmy, but what if we, what if we made our own stuff and used our music to sell our own stuff? I was like, we can do that shit. So then a year later, He's like, I was talking to Dre, and Dre was walking down the beach with his manager. And his manager told him that he should sell sneakers. And I remembered our conversation. And I told Dre, fuck sneakers, let's sell speakers. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a part of it? I'm like, part of what? The thing that I'm doing with Dre. With your ideas, Dre's Dreness. <laughs> We could do something. So I was like a part of Beats. No one knew it. I just was an equity shareholder. And my contribution was to like think and brainstorm and see around corners. So one of the first commercials for Beats was Boom Boom Pow. I'll be rocking them Beats. Commercial headphones. Wow. So your my contributions were always like, you don't have to be the dude in the front. You don't have to be like, yo, I'm doing it. No, you just want to be a player that adds points on the board whether you're doing it invisibly or visibly you just want to make sure you add points on the board and it isn't about being visible all the time actually invisible that's where it's at, at yeah walking into a room with a shit ton of fucking bodyguards you are visible you telling people you got lots of money <laughs> ain't nobody you have to pay for all these people to be here <laughs> ain't nobody want to see that the invisibles bro invisibles you want to be like ninja, bro. Ninja, bro. You want to be ninja mode. Wow. I'm, I'm really curious about the futurist in you. And, and, and I didn't even realize there was futurist sections of these companies. It's, when did you start to get into that mode of like realizing these people are brainstorming 10 years into the future? And, and how did you even start to get involved? Okay. Say that sentence, but change the word future with design. How may I help you? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, go away. <laughs> so, say that word. Okay. Say that sentence, but change the word future with design. Okay. What made you interested in the design world 
when did you first get into the design parts of companies and how did you realize that companies were thinking about their company design 10 years into the future? So 10 years into the design, this whole thing that we're living in is a design. Somebody designed these roads, somebody designed the, the configuration of what type of chemical to make that yellow line in the road paint that no matter what weather or whatever it is, a car or scrape, that's not going to come off. The cones, that, that sign that's reflective when the sun hits it, this whole shit, somebody thought of this stuff. Teams of people thought of how to bring this to market, this sure mic, whatever freaking concoction yeah. or coil or, or everything was designed. So the future is a design that has not been materialized yet. Mm. So what's a futurist? A futurist is somebody that's like, hmm, I see where this design is going. There's five ways that this is going to unfold, collapse, scale. There's maybe 10 plausible outcomes. It's like algorithm yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or future casting or seeing all the different ways that this is, that anything can play out. And when you come at problem solving or solving puzzles, or riddles, yeah. the whole entire world is throwing riddles at you or puzzles for you to figure out. And if you're hyper creative, like I, I consider myself a hyper creative, you, are, yeah. you can apply your creative mind and your hyperactivity to solving those problems. It's just channeling your energy. Yeah. And getting out the projects, creating music where you didn't have to follow the status quo to sell prisons. So hip hop has turned into a big prison commercial to get people okay and comfortable with going into this privatized system where somebody's making money. That is a trap. No pun intended. Yeah. Even the freaking definition is like, wait, wait, it's a trap. We gonna go in and out of this prison selling a product that's gonna be legal eventually. But we just setting up the market. Yo, yo, this is a trap. So now that we see it, the design was designed a long time ago. They knew that one day that you could be driving down the street and see weed commercials while people are serving 20 year sentences selling a product that was legal at one, illegal at one point in time. So the future, what is it going to be now? What is the design? Where is the design going? And how do we prepare inner city kids to be in a power state by 2034? Generative AI is brand spanking new, or is it? We know ChatGPT since October of 2022, right? Some people knew about it before it launched. Some people invested in OpenAI before they launched the product. Some people invested in OpenAI the moment the product was released. How do you know those types of people? How do you run into Sam? when GPT-3 was coming out? How do you meet Dario that built GPT-1 and 2 to invest in um, Anthropic? What's a hugging face? Why is hugging face important? What's an inflection? Why is inflection important? What are all these large language models? How do you ensure kids from inner cities are building or have the tools to create algorithms? I call it NWA niggas writing algorithms <laughs> and so I've been I've had, my, I've had my program in the inner city of my school I have a school in Boyle Heights where I come from teaching kids computer science and robotics since 2008 right now currently in LA USD my program is serving about a little over 200 schools once again ninja moves why that's important why we are living in a whole new freaking renaissance and so from the work that I do in the inner city to the future casting and, and envision um, work that I do with companies like Mercedes to bring sound drive to life, it's all part of the same thing. How do we prepare for this technological tomorrow? How do inner city kids see like, oh wow, look what Will's doing. I wanna do some shit like that too. It's all like possible. There's endless possibilities now. How am I a part of designing the future? It's gonna be designed. Yeah. Are you a designer? Would we just design the sneakers? 
I hope we ain't just designing sneakers. <laughs> Although I love sneakers. Yeah. But there's other things to, yo, right now is the time, bro, to do the most audacious industry spawning, spawning and building industries, new economies. You can do that right now. Yeah. What What do you think makes it such a perfect time for redesigning the future right now? Designing the future? Defining it? being audacious enough to compete Mm -hmm. and sometimes it takes folks that come from a different realm that never were experts in that space to really fuck shit up in an awesome way yeah yeah you know like uh, Uber that's a audacious vision because that's everything your parents told you not to do a lot of us were raised don't you get in no car with no strangers that's our company now (laughs) We all grew up, and her parents was like, and hey, don't you be taking no food from no strangers. That's our Literally. company now. And don't you be getting no strangers' house. That's our product. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so true. So what other audacious stuff can we do? Like, yo, instead of people making beats, how about at any given time, people are driving. That truck drivers drive. Every day, people are going to stop at a stop sign and move. What if that was a process of making songs? What if we take the mundane things that nobody's thinking about and allow people to create beautiful stuff just doing what people just do every day in an area that everyone ignored? If we put a system behind it, yo, we could create a whole new economy. That's audacious. And it's a silly thing to think about. Yo, we're going to create music just by going from here to there. That's a... That's a dumbass idea but without also, the system yeah. to do it. And then when you have that system, that architecture to do that, what else can you do with that architecture? Oh shit, it's Buster Rhymes. Hold on. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, bus. You coming, you coming at five? Alright, yo. Alright, nigga. So, so I'm just in the interview. I hit you, but if you can't make it, I'll go to where you are. I'll bring the whip so you can see it. No, regardless, Please. I got. I, I'm gonna surprise you with some of the drives we got. Please. Alright, where? Please, listen. Send me the address anyway, though. I'm gonna definitely still try to pull up. Alright. Alright, King. Alright. So I took my earnings and I went to Israel and Bangalore, India, and started investing in these uh, skunk works. Skunk work is if you have an idea, you go to a team and they can materialize it. So one day Jimmy Iving's like, one day you're going to realize that being the talent is not the forte. You want to collect talent. I'm like, collect talent? You collected me? (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) You collected Dre, myself, Timberland, like Gwen, Tupac. You've been collecting that whole different perspective of like what a label is he's like yeah you know you signed Fergie you got the black eyed peas you need a stable of other talent I'm like oh wow well shit I want it I want different type of talent I want like developers developers (laughs) yeah like AI guys what is AI so if you go back let's google this search right quick Professor Patrick Winston. So, I, st- I, I used to go to MIT. Every time Black Eyed Peas would tour Boston, I would go to the media lab and hang out with this guy. Wow. Professor Patrick Winston was the head of AI at the media lab. And so from 2005, 6, 7, 8, every time we would play Boston, I would go to his class. Wow. And I was intrigued. I'm like, yo... AI, if a computer is why I make music, I don't make music because I can fucking write sheet music or I can play an instrument. I make music because I can program a computer. And I wanted to meet computer programmers. So where do you meet computer programmers? You go to MIT or Stanford. But if you're thinking around the corner, 
then a computer is really AI because that's just advanced computation. Yeah. Mathematically, algorithmically, it's uh, fundamentally just hyper computation. So I wanted to learn about the next version of compute. Like right now, the next version of compute is quantum computing. But right now we're in quantum winter. Like at one point in time, we were in AI winter. Wow. So in AI winter, there's only a few enthusiasts working in the AI space. And then when you start meeting those folks, the folks that when you're in the winter, you want to get closer because it's cold out and you want to you, you be a part of a community. And so I met folks like Demis from DeepMind in 2014, went to these, these pockets of the world like Singapore, Bangalore, and Israel to work with machine learning guys, natural language processing people, natural language understanding folks. Um, and then what we now what we have, which is transformer land, which is transformer technology architecture that was created by Google. And the T in GPT stands for transformer, a protocol that Google created yeah. that's open source. Wow. Hopefully the AI can answer this question then. How does it feel for you personally to see all of your creations come to life in real life? Oh, check this one out. There's this YouTube video Black Eyed Peas did in 2009. I'm going to be rocking that body. It's 14 years ago. Dude, we're getting a little out there. Look at that. This world back in the days. Damn, sorry. Cut you off or anything. Yeah. Check this out. You know, always come with that mix. These devils, that product didn't exist at the time. Where's that? This right here. The big one. Is the future. I input my voice, high notes, my low notes, then the whole English vocabulary. What, what you're able to do with that, because of this artificial intelligence, like when it's time to make a new song, I just type in the lyrics, and then this thing sings it, says it, raps it, talks it. This is it. So that means I don't gotta like rap anymore or something? I mean, you, you, you're still rapping, but, but like, I mean, me physically, like, in a vocal booth. No. no. Okay, so you're saying machine can do anything that an artist or group can do. Yes. This is what's going to take the piece into 3008. This is the future right here. I'm just going to not go to the studio and, and not see it. I mean, it takes the no, soul out of it. No, you still go to the studio. If you go to the studio and check out what the machine does. Yeah, that's not what you Hold on, hold on. You are taking it totally wrong. Well, you can't say futuristic and then be afraid of the future. You're not robots! Yeah. Wow. So that's 2010. So you saw all of this coming back then. Um, I could see how the design unfolded. It's just inevitable from compute. If we're all making music on a computer, and then the, the computer is armed with machine learning, what do you think happens? It's just going to learn what we did. Yeah. We've been inputting, and the output is what? If it learns our inputs. So do you think, where do you think the creative aspect lies? It's almost like the, the God molecule or something you can't really explain, but what, what is... The Higgs boson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just talking to Twist about that yesterday. Ooh, check this out, bro. If you go to Twitter right quick, I type in uh, I am Will selfie spot. Oh, yeah, boom. So... So the, this machine, the Large Hydrogen Collider, is the machine that found the Higgs boson. Wow. And the work that I do in the inner city back in 2000 and 2006, when they turned on, before they turned on the Large Hydrogen Collider, we went to CERN, and I went down into the, where the uh, Large Hydrogen Collider was. I took a selfie spot on my... Blackberry. And so the CERN laboratory was like, do you mind if we put a poster, a, a, a plaque here that says, Will I Am Selfie Spot, so that when people come here, they take a picture by the Large Hydrogen Collider? Just remember, da 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 is better with the Will I Am Selfie Spot. <laughs> so the God Particle, yeah, that's that's the Higgs boson, and people go to this place that where they found it, 
It's CERN to take a picture well, in front of that uh, thing. That that is a wild connection. And you're not an alien. <laughs> yeah, that's what I honestly. See, I'm I'm sitting here like I don't know, man. This guy, I don't know. Yeah, when did no, you become no, so no. tapped in? Like, when did you know start to know yourself and and the oneness of the world so well? I don't know the world like that. I'm I'm just creating and meeting other folks that create. And trying to learn as much as possible. I'm just a sponge. It feels like, is curiosity your superpower? Uh, pattern matching and sponging. Like, just absorb and pattern match. And not being afraid to fail. Mm. Most folks are, are afraid to fail. And my thing is like, I don't mind stumbling and then getting up and then like looking at the floor like, oh wow, okay. What are so this is concrete. Hey, who made this? <laughs> this is crazy material, bro. <laughs> Let me connect like, with them. Like, yo, 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 we, can you figure out who made this shit? Because there's some bumps in here that made me fall. Like, yeah, that having that perspective of like curious to the point where you want to hunt and find out who. And once you realize the folks that made it, they're no different than you. Yeah. They're... Just as afraid, just as fucking like ambitious, but they figured out a way to to not mask their ambition and their fear. And once you apply that, ain't nothing gonna hold you from getting to know more. Are you afraid of anything now? Hell yeah, nigga, I'm afraid of like a couple of shits. What's your biggest fear? Um, I'm afraid of greed. Like companies that have kingdom like money Mm. with foul intentions on how to deploy products that undermine our civil liberties or our uh, our rights or privacy we're like yeah uh, I'm worried I'm more concerned about just greed leading with greed Um, and the inevitable that's going to happen in 2024 with like there's a big populate, the big part of the population that doesn't know about AI, and people being duped. They're gonna be thinking they're what's talking. What's real? What's yeah? Yeah, they're gonna think they're talking to somebody, and it's not a somebody. And that thing would have known you, because they bought your data from uh, Meta. Yeah. And so, and no one's talking about that. And so, how do you have a clean source of information? So what I showed you is not launched yet. Like the the conversational AI, we yeah. haven't launched that yet. Um, but I, I think when it's out, it's going to be super important to just have a conversation with something. Like, yo, 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 I just heard something just yeah, went down just, yesterday. Yeah, like, what, yeah. what is that? Well, can you tell me more information? I right, look, there was this dude. He had on a red shirt. He was, you know. Yeah. And he walked up into a place and... And something about something. Can you give me information that? Okay, what location? It was L.A. Oh, you must be talking about da-da-da. Like, just the way that we talk. We, and, and people's relationship with information. And how do you have a clean source of information? In social media, we got filters galore. But nothing to filter information? Mm. It's crazy. People are in love with filters. But not given the filters to get the right info? Yeah. Imagine I said, Siri, get me to LAX. And as it gave me a route, to Los Angeles International Airport. it gave me a hope. Got me lost? This shit ain't going to get me lost. It's going to get me directly to LAX. And if I make a left when I'm supposed to go right, it'll tell you. It'll tell me. And then it's going to give me a new ETA. I think tomorrow all products have to be that way. You need to be able to go to the supermarket be like, hey, yo, what's this? What's in it? What's in it? Is it going to hurt me? What's the alternative that's not going to allow my blood pressure to skyrocket? Just like every product in a supermarket has some label that tells you the ingredients that's on it. But half of them shits, you know what that shit means? You should be like, yo, what is that? This esclomer slip full of slights. What is (laughs) that word? And what is that going to do to me? (laughs) How how is that going to affect my metabolism? And what is the alternative? That's not where we are right now. I I can't go be like... Hey, yo, Siri, you got me to LAX. I need you to help me take the $10,000 of my bank account and turn it to $100,000 in 10 years. 
What is the route to that? You can't do that. Is there something else I can help with? <laughs> they can't do that. <laughs> Everybody's just trying to steal, <clears throat> gather data from you, but not giving you a tool to use your data for you. Mm. We've been hijacked. Somebody freaking like ganked us. Like, hey, Nick, get up off that data, bitch. Like, <laughs> like, that's exactly yeah. what's happening. You just got robbed for your jewels. What is what is jewelry right now? What is gold? Gold data is gold. Some freaking like digital gangbangers, and we know the names of the companies, came and just jacked you for your shit. Nick. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and there's like nothing. And yeah. there's no alternative. We our community should be able to be making that stuff. And so when I'm consulted for these companies, I'm like Hey, where are you from? How long have you been working here? How much are you actually getting paid? Ooh, the moment I come up with some extra cash, I'm going to hire those cuts. I want to make a system for my community. Yeah, that would be dope. Ain't nobody thinking of that. That's some audacious shit. Right? Boom. What's the worst that's going to happen? Ah, oh, man, it didn't work. But now I know. Right, let me try again. Because when I fell, I met the motherfucker that made the concrete. Next time, I ain't slipping. Because he's going to tell me what type of shoes to put on next time I go running on that concrete. Why? Because nobody was really paying attention to the concrete guy. Who's freaking kicking it with the concrete guy at the club? <laughs> he's like, hey, what do you do? Hey, man, I, I mix concrete. You can't even get into VIP. <laughs> <What do> you, <laughs> hey, you want to come chill with us? Oh, man. Actually, yeah. <laughs> like, what do you do on your days off? Nothing really. <laughs> oh, bro, like, let's let's get up, man. Ain't nobody never want to kick with me, nigga. They think my hands is crusty. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That type of shit. Hey, yo, by the way, that concoction you made. What type of shoes you think I should be running on the shit you make? Oh, crazy thing. Like motherfuckers don't even ask me that question, dog. Like, listen, you need to be walking with shoes that are made with. Blah, 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 blah. Oh shit, well, where can I get them shit? Well, actually, they don't really make them. Oh, they don't? Because my homeboy makes shoes. You think you could give him the concoction so he can make shoes to run on your Reverse concrete? engineer. You know what I'm saying? So then you network. Like, wow. That is a type of like, type of like, seeing the system. It's puzzle piecing. Yeah, bro. Okay, what's the greatest flip you've ever done from a failure, a quote unquote failure, that other people would have looked at and you took it and said, no, that actually is a springboard? Okay, I shouldn't be saying this because I work with Mercedes. But I, I'm going to say it because Mercedes will appreciate it. So in 2014, I did a campaign for Lexus that only was released in Spain. And they paid me a lot of money. And you were speaking Spanish in it? No, I didn't speak. Okay. I was just in a, just just looking okay. cool in the commercial there. watching a car go by. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dream. I'm a dream. And then they let me design a car for me to keep that they'll promote at one of my um, deliverables. So I get to design a car, put a kit on it. That's my unique car. I have part of my work days. They talk about how I designed one of the car that they went to market with. And if you want to order that kit, you can order that kit. It was a pretty cool thing. I got yeah. paid lots. But Scream and Shout was like huge. Fast forward from 2014 to 2020, and I worked my way up to meet the Mercedes folks. I got to be a Mercedes ambassador and they gave me the deal on what I was to be paid. And I'm like, Oh man, I'm about to work with Mercedes, bro. Like hip hop, like we, we used to, people used to take the medallions and, and take their emblems and put them on medallions. Like Mercedes and hip hop yeah. is like an awesome marriage. So I'm like, Oh man, this is like amazing. And so then they gave me my deal. And I'm like, what? So I've seen a deal in Spain that looked a little different. It's only one comma? Like this other one had two commas. And the number was greater than that number. This is lesser than that number. Like what? I'm barely in the one comma. Do the math. Yeah. So they were like, let's be real. Your music is not as vibrant as it was in 2014. 
<laughs> so I'm like, oh, wow, what a diss. <laughs> I'm like, oh. it ain't about the money. It's not. Because when hip-hop rapped about your stuff, we did it because we loved it. So not everything is about money. All right. I'll do it. But can you help me amplify my foundation to help me send some engineers to mentor my kids at my school? We would love to do that. I'm like, wow. <laughs> great, 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 great. So now it's purpose. Yeah. So that I did this documentary on like um, my passion points and building cars because I built cars in the past. I built a bug. I reimagined a, a beetle, a bug, a 50, a 55 bug. I did a Delore I am, and then because of my investment in Tesla, I invested in Tesla uh, before Elon took over the company in 2000. Then uh, they let me reimagine incomplete Teslas. So I built like five cars. So the CEO at the time of AMG was like, "We want you to talk about your custom cars." I'm like. Hell yeah, what? Man, see, it's not always about money. Now I get to talk about my passions. And so he's like, wow, we didn't know you built cars from scratch. Why don't you reimagine a car for us? I'm like, get out of here. You want me to reimagine a Mercedes? But to do that, that means I have to find my own team and fund it myself. I was like, hey, I'll re but you got to provide me a car. You got to give me a car. So they gave me a car to reimagine that I fund the bill and build a team. I was like, yo, I'll do it if I could auction it off and the proceeds go to, for me to build more robotic centers in inner cities. So they thought I was going to like, you know, paint it, yeah, yeah. put some rims on New it. New wrap. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the A pillar, moved it to the B pillar, removed the B pillar, elongated the nose, Turn a four four door to a two door, turn a four seater to a two seater, and then put an AI system in it, and was like, "Yo, check it out." <laughs> and they were like, "You've been working on this for ten months." I'm like, "Yeah." How did you do it so fast? I'm like, "My team." How much did it cost? I'm like, "What y'all paid me? A portion of what y'all paid me pay for it." How did you do it for that price? I'm like, passion, purpose. So like, we will buy it from you and we'll put it in our museum. So I ended up where I wanted to start anyway and then work with them in a deeper way to do sound drive. The moral of the story is it's not about money. It should never, ever be about, yo, I'm coming up, I'm making this loop. It's like, no, I need to make some change and I need to do it because we need to prepare for this technological tomorrow. I need to put more robotic centers in inner cities. And I need engineers. So when you have engineers, access to engineers, then you could do a system like this because you know who to go to call because those engineers are helping mentor in your kids because engineers know the importance of more engineers. So yeah. being purpose driven and solving bigger problems. And when you're working with in, in, in that type of realm, whether it's companies, corporations, NGOs, you're able to like, you, you're able to materialize grand ideas. Wow. Your journey is so inspiring. Even just seeing how you were willing to start like you knew the deal wasn't the deal for you not necessarily a bad deal but it wasn't the deal for you but it was because you saw the vision of here's how i can flip that that was even a flip like i know i'm gonna take the deal right now to get into the position to, to make the most amount of change possible oh no because i didn't even know that they were going to want me to flip a car it just my hunch was like maybe it's not about the money he's absolutely right i haven't made music in 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I haven't made music in six years. I've been chasing this AI stuff. So people would be like, yo, what's up with Black Eyed Peas? Like, yo, where Fergie at, bro? Like, you make, I'm like, uh, nah, nah, nah. 
I just been focused on this. I got to network more. Ninja mode. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like ninja mode out of the projects. If you're in a project and you don't look the part because everybody's t-shirt, dickies, everybody's thugged up, you want to stay out of harm's way. And my my attire was like my uniform. Like, yo, I'm not, I'm not, I'm on my path. And my uniform for my path is, is tribe vibes. So that same type of ninja mode, I got to go out there and network. I need to meet people in the industry. I need to, I can't chase chicks. I'm not trying to get caught up, get somebody pregnant. I ain't trying, I don't do drugs. I don't smoke weed. I barely drink. I'm just trying to make this dream happen. And when you do, when you're, when you're focused that way, sometimes you don't really fit into the norm because everyone else is on some type of distortion path. Well, I'm going to smoke, distort, I'm going to drink, distort. Because they're trying to get out of the nightmare mm. that reality is smacking them with. But you can get out of that nightmare by configuring a dream squad. Mm. The only way to change a nightmare is through a dream. The moment you have nightmares and you wake up out of the dream, eventually you're going to go back to sleep. You're going to have that nightmare again. The way to truly change your nightmare is to dream in the nightmare and change the nightmare by dreaming in it, being aware that you are dreaming. Like, my dreams are like, I got memories in my dream. Like, I remember that. I got tasks. Like, my dreams are vivid. Have you always been like, a, have you lucid dreamed most of your life or vivid dreamed most of your life? Nigga, I'm dreaming now. Hold on, I gotta wake up. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, this shit feels like a dream. Jimmy's school... If you were to like sit with Dre or sit with Timberland or sit with Gwen or sit with Bono or Trent Reznor, anybody that was a part of that Jimmy University, they all are a little, they see the world yeah. side, tilted. Pharrell at one point in time was, you know, in Jimmy University, you know? Yeah. What's the one song that you love to drive to? when you first started to drive, did, was there a song that was your go-to? Oh, Midnight Marauders album. That's the one? Moment Theory. Boogie Down Productions, Edutainment, any 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 of that type of stuff. Like, that's my fire. But now I like the, like I enjoy the turns, like this turn so. something when you're driving you gotta turn down to see it better yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no this is this automatically <laughs> doing for you yeah bro like wow but what's cool i told buster i'm like yo bro for example right there that person's doing it that person's doing it everybody is doing what we're doing now and no one has ever said hey if you were to create for all these moments that happen every single day, what would you create if this was the stage? There's a stage that no one is trying to perform on. And that is these moments from idle, stopped at a stop sign, and then moving from here to there. Wow. If you were to create something for that experience, what would you do? If you were to want to perform on that type of system, what would it be? And so, in that case, I'm like, these dudes, I just wanted, oh, I wanted, <laughs> I just wanted the logo yeah. to put it on the chain. Now I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> damn near got a whole freaking, a whole freaking like, uh, you have a universe in here. <laughs> a Mercedes uh, dealership? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And that's Johan right there. That's the dude. Orange shoes. The dude with the white shirt with the black jacket. Mm, ninja. 
that Yo, guy Johan, uh, he was like, hey, do you mind coming to Stuttgart? And um, we could have a, a work session. Love to pick your brain on some things. I'm like, sure. <laughs> but guess what? They don't fly you out. You fly yourself out. Because, and if they do fly you out, do you want them to fly you out? Mm. Or do you fly yourself out? Because if they fly you out, then your ideas are theirs. If you fly yourself out, then you're not on their dime. So you fly yourself out. So you can brainstorm freely under a mutual NDA. NDA. So once you, you get yourself out of like, yo, what am I getting paid? And, that, and it's like, yo, we are equals. I got ideas. You got ideas. I know how to materialize a network. You know how to materialize a network. Why don't we co-develop? And when they send you like a, yo, send me a vehicle. I'll sign whatever I need to sign to ensure that it's insured. And I'm a good partner. Why? Because you demonstrated that from the jump. It's not about money. Because mm. the moment it's about money, then you're either devaluing yourself or you're leading with greed. But if you're leading with solving problems, well then, it ain't about greed. And you can trust me. And I can trust you. Yeah. To the point where they trusted me with sending cars or they trusted me with like, yeah, build and flip our whip. <laughs> hey, yo. I see that it says AMG there. And I see there's a whole bunch of lines that could say will. Can I call it will I AMG? Oh wow, we've never let anybody mess with our, um, our, our logo like that. But what if it's just for my custom car and I call it a Will I AMG? And so they let me do that. Or like, yo, I've noticed that your Mercedes logo kind of looks like a bear's mouth. What? Yeah, bro, it kind of looks like a bear's mouth. What if my program was to tell inner city kids that they're royalty and to bear witness to transformation? So they let me take their logo, wow. turn it into a bear, so that inner city kids realize that when they apply themselves to solving problems with today's tools to transform tomorrow, we have royal visions and wow. equity in creating these solutions by identifying our ability to solve our own problems ourselves. We are royalty. And so to get Mercedes to be like, we, yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, bro. I'm like, oh my hey, God. yo, <laughs> that Mercedes logo, that's a bear. It's not a bear. It's a star. It's a bear. It's a star. It's a bear. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, you know, it, that's trust. Yeah. It's a trusted thing because it's for purpose. Are you selling those jackets? Uh, the proceeds are going to go build robotic centers. What I guess. I ain't trying to <laughs> come up. Sell, I'm not in a fashion. That's Kanye. I just want to fucking sell some jackets to raise money to build robotic centers in inner cities. And they're like, okay. Yeah. It's the trust. It's based on purpose. What, last question. What do you think your purpose is in this life? My purpose is to continue to go out, sponge up the world, um, be curious, apply myself to solve problems, um, and, and uh, to provide opportunities for folks that resemble myself, that come from the communities that I come from. There's some kids right now that are like, how do I get up out of this? Sports is a way out. Music is the way out. How long? AI yeah, will probably change that. What are the other paths? What are the other paths that... Right? It's like 1984 right now. In 1984, was hip-hop the way out? It became the way out. Yeah. But it hip-hop was birthed because of technology. You wasn't hip hopping with a band. In a way, you were. Now, Rogers, thank you so much for good times, and all the musicians that replayed it because, 
You know, there was no samplers to sample that yeah. whole break. So yeah, in a way, yep. But what really exploded hip hop to be the industry and the economy that it is was technology, samplers, you know, turntables. Even music is technology. Our Grammy Award is Thomas Edison's gramophone. But everyone thinks everyone but the engineers. So my purpose is to inspire and remind kids that come from the communities that I come from to be audacious, to compete with giants. Because low-key, they were never giants to begin with. They just became giants. Wait, you can't sprout. We can't blossom into being giants. I think we can. You know, we when we posse up the way we posseed up with beats. Like that was a that's that was some serious, like rallying. Yeah, yeah. You know, if if we do that around FYI, we could because that means some kid is going to do the next Google. Some kid with a nine right now. There's a nine-year-old in Mississippi right now that is gaming. He's left of center. He's geeking off of chat GPT. The next platform's going to come. Maybe he's going to create it. Maybe she's going to create it. Maybe they're going to create it. Somebody needs to know that it's possible. It's not like there's an app on the app store that's a a communication tool that came from somebody from the projects right now. It's everything but. You got the Russian one called Telegram. You got Signal. Who knows where they came from, but it exists. You got WhatsApp. That exists. FYI exists. That's a project kid. So hip hop was like my vehicle. And now transforming a vehicle with like Mercedes, like what? So now you have your own, the Will AMG on the new logo. But because it's for purpose. Yeah. It's, we're in a different world, bro. We're in a different space. And I got ideas. So I'll, I'll use stuff. I'm like, that's broke. Oh, I got an idea of a way to fix it. Let me call my engineers up and dream dream how to solve that. I have a radio show on Sirius XM where my co-host is the AI. So instead of, <laughs> instead of I'm like, yo. Are you the AI? <laughs> who mean AI? No AI? <laughs> but you can't spell Will I Am without LLM or AI. I feel That's like we're going to see another Will I Am. <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh, that was 